So here we are guys for the incident analysis for the 2019 British Grand Prix and there is so so much to go through in this video and we're going to start off with the crash and the incident between Sebastian Vettel and Max Verstappen. So first let's look at what happened in this incident. So of course Max Verstappen got on the slipstream of Sebastian Vettel down the hangar straight then went just about around the outside but went slightly wide giving Vettel a good run going down to the final chicane and as you can see here Sebastian Vettel was right up behind Max Verstappen and trying to get the position back and then he looked to the inside but there wasn't enough room to get down the inside and get back third place in the Grand Prix so what Sebastian tried to do was come back to the outside but he didn't have enough room to do so and he piled straight into the back of the Red Bull driver. Now it's pretty much a slam dunk that Sebastian Vettel is at fault for this incident and now I'm going to show why but also show what he should have done instead if he was to try and re-overtake Max Verstappen at this point of the Grand Prix. So Again, Max Verstappen has gone slightly wide on the exit of Stowe Corner, giving Vettel a good run on him going down into the chicane. Now, at this point, Sebastian looks down the inside, but as you can clearly see, there is not enough room to get down the inside considering how wide these current 2019 cars are. Now, he, t he starts rather to turn the wheel. To the outside to try and go to the outside line but because of where he is in comparison to Max Verstappen he's never going to get to that outside line without hitting Max Verstappen because look how close to the back of him he is and he quite frankly doesn't have enough time to get to that inside or that outside line rather because he hasn't given himself enough space to get there and then of course Piled into the back of Max Verstappen and Sebastian is clearly at fault for just running Verstappen off the track and he deserved the 10 second penalty he got and all the criticism he has got for it. What he should have done is what his teammate Leclerc did to Verstappen on uh, I think lap 2 after the safety car restart. He should have gone right around the outside of the chicane and then made it the inside for the second part of the chicane and tried to get back past that way, as we'll see later on in this video, with Leclerc and Verstappen, but instead tried to go for quite a risky manoeuvre, and then it ended up not working at all, and he completely destroyed his and Max Verstappen's race. It was a very pointless manoeuvre that he tried to do, Vettel, and I think lacked just basic racing knowledge at that time to try and get past Max Verstappen there was no way with Max covering the inside line there was no way that Sebastian was going to go down the inside he could only go to the outside if he was going to get back past so why he did what he did I don't know but uh, there you go and yet yeah, Sebastian Vettel I think clearly at fault for this crash but now let's get on to the good stuff the great racing between Charles Leclerc and Max Verstappen that was really I think in terms of entertainment the highlight of the 2019 British Grand Prix so let's first look at the first incident so as you can see here Verstappen close behind Charles Leclerc and then he does uh, a switchback or an undercut through turn three going into turn four. Now, on the exit of the corner here, you may think that Charles Leclerc is being a bit too rough with Verstappen and Verstappen is being pushed off the track slightly, but simply, Max Verstappen didn't have enough room uh, on his own to get the overtake done. So what Charles Leclerc did was absolutely fine and was just good. Uh, fair racing between Charles Leclerc and Max Verstappen and also it's good to see 
that Max did not try to continue that move around the outside and very smartly just after got out of it so he didn't have contact with Leclerc because I think the old Max Verstappen from a couple years ago would have tried to hold it around the outside and it probably would have resulted in contact. Then we have the racing just after the pit lane. So in the pit lane, Max Verstappen just got ahead of Charles Leclerc. But Charles, of course, was not content with being relegated down a position. Into turn three, he tried to switch back on Max Verstappen, but knew that realistically that uh, this was not going to work. So what he did at turn four, which was smart, but was also the only thing he could do to get back past Max Verstappen, was to try and force an error. Now, this move by Leclerc is not an attempted overtake. What he's trying to do is scare Verstappen into thinking that Leclerc is going right down the inside in a dive bomb fashion when he clearly wasn't. He was just trying to scare Verstappen into going wide. And Max did exactly that. He went wide and then Leclerc got back past. Great racing by these two again and great uh, thinking by Charles Leclerc. Always thinking is Charles and also Max Verstappen in ways to you know, attack and defend your position. Great by Charles Leclerc there. And then a few laps later, going into Stowe just before the safety car, Max Verstappen went right down the inside of Charles Leclerc. Now, as I'll show here, Max Verstappen is so, so brave to throw it down the inside considering the lack of space that there was uh, going into Stowe Corner. As you can see here, as Verstappen tries to go down the inside, there isn't that much space for him to do so, but he goes for it anyway. And even here, as he is basically fully alongside, he is so close to going off the track, but still keeps his foot in it and keeps going to that inside line. But again, Charles Leclerc, very smart, thinking on his feet, knows, and this is the truth, that at Stowe Corner, the outside line is the favoured line because you can carry such great speed around the outside at Stowe Corner. It's very similar to uh, Le Coum from Spa. The outside line is always the favoured line for overtaking because you tend to to get a better position for the exit of the corner if you're going to complete the overtake. So that is exactly what Charles Leclerc did. And went right round the outside and just about maintained his position. Then after the safety car came in, Charles Leclerc tried his best after losing position to Max Verstappen because of a stupid Ferrari strategy decision. He tried one last time to get back past Max Verstappen so he could race him for that podium by going around the outside into the final chicane. And this is, by the way, what uh, Sebastian Vettel should have done in his incident with Max Verstappen. He should have tried exactly what Charles Leclerc did. What Leclerc did was carry the momentum he had round the outside and then force his way past Verstappen into the second part of the chicane. Now, you may say Leclerc forces Verstappen off the track, but I don't think that is the case. I think it's a bit of, you know, Leclerc forcing his way in there, but also Max Verstappen turning in. So for me, racing incident that is. And then, of course, Verstappen goes off the track and just about gets it back again going on to the pit straight that is what Sebastian Vettel should have done but I have to say the racing between Charles Leclerc and Max Verstappen was some of the best racing I have ever seen it was literally very similar to Gilles Villeneuve and Rene Arnoux from Dijon in 1979 it was that good and hopefully that is the standard for racing between those two going forward. Because if those two in the future, once, you know, Lewis Hamilton and Sebastian Vettel are gone, if those two are the two competing for the world championships, this, 
if this is the standard for racing between the two, then we are in for a great decade in the 2020s or even the 2030s. We really, really are. But the final thing I'm going to analyze is Charles Leclerc's amazing overtake on Pierre Gasly. So going down into turn three, Charles Leclerc did have a great run on Gasly and Gasly knew that he had to defend the inside going into turn number three. But Leclerc simply went around the outside because at the time Leclerc was actually struggling to get past Pierre Gasly. He didn't ha have at times quite enough speed where it mattered to get past. But at this point Charles Leclerc is very frustrated and knew he had to get past if he was going to fight for a podium finish later on which he got. So what Leclerc did was simply carry tons of speed and momentum around the outside of the corner. What Leclerc does that is so good is that at this point he knows that if Gasly now makes a mistake, he will be the cause of the accident. And because he carries so much momentum around the outside of the corner, Gasly can't do anything. He can't defend his position because Leclerc knows that he has the inside for turn four. Great piece of racing again by Charles Leclerc. And he was definitely one of the best drivers at Silverstone uh, yesterday on Sunday. But that is it for the incident analysis video, guys. Yes, I could have analysed a lot more, such as Norris Ricardo, uh, Perez Hulkenberg, the Haas crash, the Mercedes racing. I could have analysed even more, and that just tells you how great the British Grand Prix of 2019 was. Hopefully, that continues into Hockenheim. And I just cannot wait now for the next race, because this race was so, so good, and hopefully we get more like it. But guys, let me know in the comments, do you agree or disagree with my analysis and my verdicts as to who's at fault and how the racing unfolded? Let me know in the comments. Also, don't forget to subscribe and smash the like button for more content like this. I'll be back on Thursday at 12pm UK time for a video about Max Verstappen versus Charles Leclerc and who is better. And until then, guys, it has been me, Chazer HD. Goodbye.